let's start ta by talking about how to log into GPT, look at its interface a little bit, and give you some you know quick idea of how it kind of works. Real you know real basic thing, and then we'll get real deeper and deeper as we go in the course. So to get to ChatGPT and create your account, uh, you want to actually if you're doing like a Google search, you want to do ChatGPT login here is what you want to do. The reason is if you put just ChatGPT, a lot of times they'll bring you right to their just their blog, and you don't have the login at all, and it gets confusing and hard to find. So what you want to do is put in login and find like the login, like I'll say chat open AI, open AI, AI who makes chat GPT and, and, and supports and all that. And then once you click on that, or if you just go to uh, open chat.openai.com slash authorization login, you're going to get to a screen that looks like this that can update or change at any time. But basically, if you're a user already like I am, you can just log right in. And if you want to sign up, you just click sign up and it'll just start asking things like your email and all this. You can see I'm already pretty popular because I'm already have an account with them, but otherwise you just create your account uh, through that. Pretty simple, uh, pretty easy to do. It's free, at least for now it's free, but that could change at any moment as well. But right now it's free to do, and you'll just ask for username, create a password, simple stuff, right? So I have an account, so I have it up and going already here. So this is what the current JetGPT uh, interface looks like. It's pretty clean, pretty easy to go use. Please understand they're always constantly updating everything. So if it looks a little different, that doesn't mean the course is out of date or anything like that. It's all still current. It just might be how their interface might be evolving and looking. But how you'll use it will be the same um, as it just might look a little different. But right now what you'd see is on the left-hand side, you have these different chats. You can create a new chat or different chats. These are same things I've been asking or working with before, so it remembers that. So you can go back to that string of things you've been looking at. So like I was interested in uh, pros and cons of self-managing uh, property. If I want to buy some real estate property, and it gave me back information on pros and cons of that. So I could go back to that and ask some more follow-up questions based on this conversation string. Or if I want to just delete it, I just hit the, uh, you know, the trash icon, and I I could delete that whole string. So that's what this is. And this is a relatively newer feature. So this is actually very, very nice. You can clear conversations. There's a dark mode. There's a Discord group, if you're that. Uh, updates and FAQs, you can find that here. There isn't too many, but if you want, you can find FAQs and stuff and certainly log out. And then it has this thing where it talks about some examples here. You can see examples from how to ask a 12 year or what to get for a 10 year old birthday, all the way up to how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript. And we're gonna go through lots of use cases and examples. That's some real guts of the course here. So you know, you'll see all sorts of ways that you can actually really apply this to for yourself in a real world environment. I'll walk you right through how to do it. You know, and some of the capabilities, remembering what it said, and you can build on all those things. And then also some limitations, like you know, that it's uh, you know based on data that might be a year old or two years old, you'll keep updating that all the time. But understand, it's not really designed to, to tell you like, you know, how late is my, my favorite pizza restaurant open today? That's something like you could get out of a Google search. It's gonna be more about, you know, more of those deeper type questions, not necessarily deeper, but questions that are more universal type questions versus something that might be a more recent type thing or something that's happened today or in this moment. And then lastly, the main part of JetGPT, really what you're going to use, is right down here, right where this little arrow thing is. Again, they could move this to a different part of the screen. But right here where you see my blinking cursor, that's where all the magic happens. That's where you would, you know, ask your questions, you know, like, you know, whatever you want to do, like how to make a pizza, right? And you could, you could just ask that, ask it that, pizza and then it'll answer your question. So I'll hit enter. And this, this is all in real time, by the way. I'm on my uh, my home internet Wi-Fi, kids streaming stuff upstairs. Or, you know, So it's, this is about as slow as it's ever gonna go. And here it's giving me a recipe on how to make homemade pizza. Now I might wanna you know, build on that and ask more detailed questions like, maybe I want a certain type of pizza, like a thin crust pizza or a deep dish pizza, whatever it might be. You can see it's giving me the instructions and everything on how to on how to do that, right? How to make this pizza. So that's an idea. I'm sure that's fascinating watching how to make pizza. We're gonna get into more work type stuff here. And so we're gonna go back uh, you know, to our chat GPT <laughs> and we're gonna start looking at some use cases and some practical tips. I'm gonna start with and give you some really great ideas and some tips that will really help you to really get the most out of here coming right up.